Hello, we're looking at section 11.3, the, the section that is about polars. And 11.3, what we're going to do is focus on graphing polar equations. So we'll just graph a couple and get a feel for how this works. And mainly we're going to use a point plotting method just like we would in rectangular form, only this time we're going to be using ordered pairs that go r comma theta. And if you recall, in this ordered pair, the independent variable comes second. So we will be inputting theta values to come out with our values. And we're going to just use some common unit circle um, radians to plot our points. And I'm going to just number this real quickly, one, two, three, four, five, to give me a guideline over there. Now, let's start with theta being zero. When I put zero into my equation, that will look like 4 times sine of 0. Well, the sine of 0 is 0, so I get 0 as my answer. Moving along, oh, maybe let's go plot that point. 0, 0. That is a 0 to this equation. We hit the pole on that one or the origin. So that is a 0 to this equation, this polar equation. Pi over 6, now I'm looking at 4 times sine of pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and that will make this a 2. So at pi over 6, so I'm going to travel. Remember how we plot these? We travel up by pi over 6 and then extend out, walk along that ray till we hit 2. And there is our value. Put a, put a dot. Next, let's do pi over 3. So 4 times sine of pi over 3. Now, these, this value is not going to be quite as nice. We'll have 4 times square root 3 over 2. And the square root of 3 is about 1.7. So I'm going to have 4 times 4 over 2 giving me 2. 2 times 1.7 is going to be 3.4 and a little more. It's going to be, let's just call it close to 3.5. It'll be accurate enough for for our graphing method here. So pi over 3 and 3.5. At pi over 2, this should be a nice value. We have sine of pi over 2, which is 1. 4 times 1 gives us 4. So we will strike probably the farthest r value on the graph here. And then we go to 2 pi over 3. Well, that value is going to be exactly the same as if I were pi over 3 because sine is positive in both quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So I know that value will be 3.5. 5 pi over 6, that value is going to match with pi over 6, so that will come out as a 2. And then when I'm back at pi, 4 times sine of pi well, the sine of pi is 0, so 4 times 0 is 0. So we make it back home. And indeed, this does turn out to be a circle. And that was a rather poor circle. We'll try again. And not much better, but you get the idea. Um, if you look at the symmetry on, on our circle, we would say this is symmetric with the y-axis. And that is the case because it is a sine theta equation. And everything that has sine theta for us is going to turn out to be symmetric with the y-axis. We also could have predicted the um, radius, or really the diameter of our circle. The diameter would be 4, radius being 2. And um, that's about it. Not too bad. Plotting points. Hey, another thing. Why don't you grab your calculator and let's just examine how you would put it in your calculator and maybe working with the windows a little bit. So grab the calculator, throw your mode into polar and radians. So I've got both going on on mine. I've got radian and then I came down and walked over to polar. Got that set. Um, to standardize the window, I would like a square window so the circle comes out looking like a circle. So I'm going to let the calculator adjust um, 
the window so that I have more X values than I do Y values showing, and that will square up the display. And there is the, the circle plotted. Now, another thing you can do is if I hit the trace button, right now you can see mine saying R equals zero and theta equals zero. The way I got it to do that and not just plotting X and Y like rectangular mode does, I went into second format and turned that first option, which is rectangular graphing coordinates, I turned it into polar graphing coordinates. So try doing that. That's, that makes it kind of interesting. And then when I'm back on my graph, when I hit trace, it can move and you can see R slowly changing. Now, on my window, I can see what it's set as. I've got my theta. It sets it to um, a minimum of zero. So just like we started our chart at zero and a theta max going to 3.14, so it's finishing at pi. And my step is really small. So I'm going to move this step right now. I'm going to change it to, to pi over 6. So I'm going to go pi divided by 6. And then the x and the, and the y min's maxes were set when I clicked on zoom square. So it squared things out. And notice how the x goes up to 8, whereas the y only goes up to 5. And that's to, to even out our display so that the pixels are the, the, the um, scaling units are the same from. And now, when I did pi over 6, isn't that interesting? Well, it's only plotting. Um, out a few values, what, seven values. And so mine looks like it's a hexagon, doesn't it? Um, and, and if I hit trace, you'll see it's going to just bounce amongst those values that we captured um, going through. Okay, and so it walked around once. And if I wanted to get more pl points plotted, well, then I need to change. And I'm going to go, maybe let's go pi divided by 12 this time and see what that looks like. Ah, much more circular. If we hit trace, it'll be going on these values here. So very interesting, huh? And if you even want more accuracy, well, then you can do more stops for the theta value. All right, next one. You may not have graph paper, um, but you could just draw on your paper um, an XY plane, and then we'll, we can turn that into polar. So we'd have our major, you know, at pi over 2 and 0 for our thetas, and 3 pi over 2, and so on, so that we can graph out. I've got a nice polar one here to, to demonstrate with. All right, what I want us to graph is r equals 3 plus 3 sine theta, and we'll do the same thing. We'll just start plotting points, and let's start with the easiest one, throwing in 0. So if I throw in 0, I'm going to have 3 plus 3 sine of 0, but the sine of 0 is 0, so I end up with 3 plus 0 is 3. So we could go on the uh, primary axis here of theta being 0 and over to 3, plot our first point. Next, let's jump to pi over 6. At pi over 6, I'm going to have 3 plus 1 half times 3, because the sine of, of um, pi over 6 is 1 half. That's going to give me 1 and a half, so 4.5 on pi over 6. Plot 4.5. Let's go to pi over 3 next. And that'll be 3 plus 3 times square root 3 over 2. And I think I'll grab a calculator on this one. So I'll go back to the home screen and let's go 3 plus. 3 times square root of 3 divided by 2, 5.6.
All right, so we're going to go plot at that point, and we've got pi over 3, 5.6. Go up to pi over 2, and we're looking at 3 plus 3. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, and that will be a max value, won't it? So we're going to be at 6 when we're at pi over 2. Now, I think I can use the idea of symmetry over the y-axis to generate the rest of my quadrant 2 values. So at 2 pi over 3, that's going to be quite similar to pi over 3, so we're going to get 5.6 on that one. And let's go to 5 pi over 6. That will play out the same as pi over 6, so that'll be a 4.5. 4.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.5, and next let's go at pi, and we know what happens at pi, sine goes to 0, so we'll have 3 plus 0 is 3, and the reason, you know, remember we're, we're mapping out the angle first, so I was at pi, there's my angle, and then walking out three units on that ray. And that's how we've ended up over on the left side of our coordinate plane here. Not our coordinate plane, but our polar plane. Now, um, let's throw in 7 pi over 6. And this is where the values are going to start to change. I'm going to have 3 plus 3 sine of 7 pi over 6. Well, at this point, we start picking up a negative value for sine. So this is going to be negative 3 pi over 2. And let's grab the calculator, get its value. And I can do Um, grab the former one, let's copy this, and all I need to do is change it to a minus here. And I get 0.4. So this turns out to be 0 0.4. And then let's, while we're on it, we will want to go 7 pi over, so 3, 4 pi over 3 would be our next stop. 3 plus 3, sine of pi over, uh, 4 pi over 3 is like 3 plus 3 times, well, that value is going to be, oh, I messed up. Sorry about this. This one is negative 1 half. This one is going to be the negative square root 3 over 2. So this answer is 0 0.4. Good thing I didn't plot yet, I guess. And this one, negative 1 and a half plus 3 will give me 1.5. Ooh, I like that better. Not such a drastic change from where we had been. So now as we walk in, we're on 7 pi over 6, and we're extending out 1.5. So I've got to take this off, and I'm along the ray of 7 pi over 6 going out 1 and a half. When we're at 4 pi over 3, we only go out a half a unit. And now let's see what happens when we are down at the bottom at 3 pi over 2. We're going to have 3 plus 3 sine of 3 pi over 2. And 3 pi over 2 is a negative 1, so I'm going to have 3 minus 3, giving me 0. Ooh, we just found a 0 of this equation. It occurs at 3 pi over 2. Now, stepping back out, let's go out to 5 pi over 3, which is going to mimic 4 pi over 3, so I'll have a 0 0.4, because sine values are negative in quadrants 3 and 4. These will map out the same, as will 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 is going to turn out to be that, that 1.4 value. So here's what we have. We started at 3, um, 0 for theta, and worked our way out, and then it came in and back up. This is called a cardioid 
shape. So these equations that look like like this, and here's what's interesting about this equation. If I get an R equals A plus B sine theta, where A equals B, let's say the absolute value of A equals the absolute value of B, when those are identical, these are going to turn out to be cardioids. Now this one is symmetric with the x, uh, sorry, the y-axis because of the sign in it, okay? And uh, yeah, all of these will turn out to be. What do you think would happen if we had negative and negative? Well, then it's going to bounce over and we will have it just, re re it'll bounce over into quadrants um, three and four where the major part will be down below and so forth. So you can start picking up some of the, the nuances of these equations and make it a little bit easier on yourself when graphing them because you can predict what's going to happen. For instance, I knew that if I added A plus B, I would get the longest R value of 6. My shortest R value would be the difference between A and B. And in this case, that was zero. So I didn't end up with any r when I came in at 3 pi over 2. And that's where the shortest one happened, the longest one being at pi over 2. So there we go. Hope that helps uh, you to begin to understand graphing polar equations.